I am the Great Equalizer. No one advances without my permission. Thus, everyone dies together. Oh, he's got his free Even me. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the EDH deck deck for Mogus, the god of slaughter. Before we jump in, let's get to the rules for my EDH deck decks first. One, these are somewhat budget. This one is slightly higher than previous one, but still sits at, you know, $150, $160. Two, I never paid more than $5 for a card, mostly because I'm poor. So if there is a pricey card in here, it's because I either packed it, traded for it, or got it before a spike. I actually only paid like $12 for this deck and traded for the rest of it over a year long process. So if I can get these cards, you can too. There is hope. And finally, the commander is priceless. It can be worth more than $5. But Mogus only sits around $6 or $7, so it's not terrible. Okay, so what is Mogus? He's your new god baby, that's what. For black, red, and two, you get a 7-5 indestructible that is an enchantment unless your devotion to red or black is seven or more. Also, at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, they have to sack a creature or lose two life. Where is the fucking downside? This boy is beef, and I'm Eden. So at its basic essence, this deck is a group hug deck, where you get to hug your friends in a suit made out of two-way syringes, broken glass, and pig teeth. They may get tetanus, but so will you, and that's true equality. But we'll get back to that later. In the spirit of Mogus, we want every action our opponents perform to be like stepping on attack. Painful. Our opponents want to play lands and ramp, we got Zozu and Ankh of Mishra to ping them. Card draw, spiteful visions and underworld dreams damages them. Creatures, Rampaging Ferocidon pings the player and Aether Flash blasts any two power creature that enters the battlefield. Nothing says fun like watching a bunch of 0-1 goats hitting the battlefield like they were just dropped off the fucking Eiffel Tower. If they want to play little spells, Pyrostatic Pillar hits them for two. By the way, this card is much better than Eidolon of Rebels. Or if they want to play any spell, Spell Shock hits them for two. The Painful Quandary hits them for five or forces discard. If they have a lot of lands, hit them with Acidic Soil. If they have a lot of non-basic lands, hit them with Price of Progress. And if they want to tap those non-basic lands, we have Burning Earth to ping them for one for each land they tap. But if they tap any land, Mana Barb damages them. Or if they don't tap any lands, Citadel Pain damages them. That's a soft lock. Toasty! Wars Toll forces them to tap all their lands at once. That's some hefty damage right there. Fuck, we even damaged them for adding mana to our mana pool, or Cryptolith Fragment. By the way, this thing has an unknown backside that appears if all players have 10 or less life. Trust me, it will flip. The backside is a disgusting 1-4 flyer that drains opponents for 3 on attack. It's also an Eldrazi. We'll even punish them when shit hits their graveyard. Burning Sands make players sack a land every time a creature they control dies, while well, Grave Betrayal brings all of our opponent's creatures back to life on our side of the board. Last Laugh deals 1 damage to all players and creatures whenever a permanent hits any graveyard. This can cause a crazy cascade effect that ends the game, all because someone cracked an evolving wild. <coughs> and Blood Chief Ascension? Phew. Drains for 2, and you gain 2 whenever a card hits an opponent's graveyard. From anywhere. Pair this with Minecrank, and you got a game-winning loop, as early as turn 3. Some may say that's degenerate, but I've done it before, and let me tell you, nothing makes you feel bigger than milling out someone with a red-black deck. That's quite big. Impressive. But we're not done. We're gonna damage them just for taking their turn. Mogus is a good start, but let's throw in Magmatic Force so we can bolt something on every turn. Spiteful Visions forces them to draw an extra card and damage them for each card drawn, and Sulfuric Vortex pings them for two on upkeep, just like Mogus. Now at this point you're probably thinking, what about life gain decks? They must suck to play against, they undo all your hard work. 
Well, we'll just stop them from gaining life. The second part of Sulfuric Vortex does that, and so does Rampaging Ferocidon, Havoc Festival, and Everlasting Torment. Torment also makes all creatures take wither damage in the form of Neg1 Neg1 counters, so that damage is permanent. Goodbye, indestructible creatures. Speaking of Havoc Festival, it halves everyone's life on upkeep, similar to when you tap Heartless Hadesugu. And, if you pair Hadesugu with any damage doubling effects like Dictate of the Twin Gods, Furnace of Wrath, or Insult, it kills everyone at the table with an even life total. So from all that, you might gather that this deck is a threat. And we don't run many creatures, so why don't people just target us from the start? Well, as I'm sure you noticed, many of the cards also hit us. So, we're all bleeding together. Isn't that fun? You can't spell slaughter without laughter. <laughs> <laughs> but eventually people do get whittled down and become dependent on you. You're keeping the life game player in check, the card drawing combo player in check, the token maker in check, you're protecting everyone at the table for the small price of their life. They need you to live in order to survive. But with you surviving, you're actually killing them. It's a wonderful psychopathic paradox when you bring them sheer agony, but they keep coming back. Who does that? Thanks for supporting the channel, by the way. But with this, we do have advantages for ourselves. We have the finest ramp around and stones and rings and signets, oh my. As well as a lotus and ingot, burnished heart, and this searchlight that can give any player mana. That's a group hug part. But our biggest source of mana comes from the Heb that gives us red mana equal to the life lost from opponents on our turn. We also have this compass that can search for lands, but it flips into this land that can untap attacking creatures our opponents control. And that leads to the other side of Mogus. A slow side. If we can't keep up, we just make our opponents slow down. Uphill battle makes creatures our opponents cast enter tap, while smoke only allows players to untap one creature per turn. Mudslide makes you pay 2 mana to untap a creature without flying during your untap step, and Storage Matrix only lets players untap either lands, creatures, or artifacts. If you're still worried about being hit by a big creature, Backlash taps an untapped creature and makes it punch its owner. Save this one for the Hydras. But why let them attack at all? Crawl Space only allows 2 creatures to attack you per combat, where Ensnaring Bridge stops all creatures with power more than the number of cards in your hand from attacking. Pair this with Bottled Cloister and nothing attacks on your opponent's turn, because you have no hand. The Cloister also works wonders with Null Brooch, pay 2 and discard your hand to counter non-creature spell. Yeah, we're gonna counter spells in a red-black deck. There's no problem discarding your hand if you don't have a hand to start with. The benefit of Bottled Cloister is that it also draws you a card on your turn. Speaking of card draw, Greed is good too. But what is a red-black deck without some chaos? Let's toss in Possibility Storm. Whenever a player casts a spell, they instead cast the next spell in their deck that shares a type with the first spell, for free. But if you pair this with Damping Sphere, they actually have to pay an additional 1 mana on that free spell. Right of the Storm gives everyone a hasty 5-1 to the start of their turn, but these guys can't attack you. Wonderful. War's Toll forces all creatures to attack when one is declared, and Last One Standing blows up the whole board except for one random lucky creature. Speaking of board wipes, Breaking Point kills all creatures unless a Valiant Soul takes 6 damage to the face, while Torment of Hailfire clears boards, empties hands, and deals damage, and Vandal Blast wipes away all of our opponent's artifacts. Keeping the ball rolling, we got Blasphemous Act that deal 13 damage across the board, while Earthquake can deal as much damage as you want. These damage bait board wipes go really well with Stuffy Doll to make one person really sad. And Arc Bond, well, that can just end the game. It deals damage to each creature and player equal to the damage dealt to target creature. So you just gotta wait for the right jump block and bam, game's over. We're gonna throw in some filler cards like Fnatic Mogus for good late game damage. Gaunty to mess with our opponent's deck, and Rakdos Charm for just all around utility. And you got yourself a nice Mogus deck. The lands in this deck can be whatever your pretty little heart desires. Just go heavy on the red. Personally, I run 28 basics and then all the cheap red-black dual lands. Nothing too exciting, but it's a cheap and effective mana base. 
And that is the Mogus deck. It might sound odd, but players actually enjoy this deck. People will keep you alive just to see the crazy shit that happens. There are some real sadists out there in the Magic community. And the best part is, nobody feels like a loser or a winner when this deck is played. The winner of the game normally only has 5 life left. It really brings a playgroup together in realizing how fragile we all are. So maybe, just maybe, somewhere deep in Mogus' heart of rusty nails, he knew his pain would bring people together. He may just be the messiah we've all been waiting for. So if you like this deck tech or any other crazy things I do here on the King of Jank channel, like subscribe, comment, share, ring YouTube's bell, all that good shit, and until next time, may Mogus bless you.